Namaskar. Hello and welcome to Pee Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer and today is episode number 81 of Ask Abhijit and let's welcome our guest of the evening, Abhijit Ayer Mitra. Abhijit, Namaskar and welcome to Pee Guru's channel. Namaskar um, to everyone and all. Very well, very well. Vettri Vail, Vira Vail, welcome to you, Abhijit. And let's jump straight into question and answers. We are hoping to finish all our questions for today. Let's see how successful we are. First question, please. All right. Please like this video and also please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Here's the first question. Simple Life wants to know, how are Biswa Sarma and Suvendu Adhikari able to get the job done in high-risk areas, but other BJP personnel are not? Ram Madhav was able to do it though. Mm, so who is not, for example? Uh, look, every party is going to have different capacities. You know, the capacity for doing and the courage required etc is not going to be even across every party you know it's not a robot factory parties are made up of individuals and so you're going to see different abilities in different places it's that simple but also remember in certain areas <coughs> the central government will back you to do certain things and in some areas the the risk assessment is just too high and they won't give you that full back so it's a simple example. In Kerala, uh, uh, there's this belief somehow that, uh, 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 you know, uh, the BJP can't do it right now. And so they're not giving full backing. I mean, you've seen how many uh, RSS guys keep getting killed before the elections, right? So it's like that. Next question, please. Amai Tandon wants to know, what is the third gender in Hinduism and their position? Is it possible to use that to counter woke gender theory? So it, there's actually 62, 63, something like that, genders in Hinduism. Uh, not all of them are referred to complementarily, uh, but there are about 62, 63 genders. And uh, this guy called Ankit Bhuptani has written about it. Fascinating read. I suggest you all read it. Um, and yeah, you can use that to counter woke gender theory, but do you really want to counter their 63 genders with your 63 genders? I mean, the last thing you want is to become competitively woke. <laughs> Next question, please. Kanda Batata wants to know, why do US-Mexico wall doesn't have barbed wire on to prevent border crossings? Question to both of you. I have never understood that. You know, when I lived in Albuquerque, uh, we used to drive south and beyond a certain point you had to be very careful because there used to be lots of and you hadn't even gotten to Mexico you had to be very 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 careful south of uh, Roswell I think yeah uh, it was like uh, it was the wild wild west you could get carjacked anything could happen you had to drive past quite fast etc 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 so I never understood why that border wasn't fenced. I honestly never understood it. But it is what it is. Well, if, if it's any help, they are now making it 10 feet and 12 feet tall. So Are they? Uh, but Biden isn't going ahead with it, no? No, no. He, he's not changing anything. He's going with what Trump did. But he just keeps saying that Title 42 will be lifted. There are half a million people waiting across the border to come in and all of them are just waiting and i don't think it's going to happen the us has far too many problems you know it's disgusting uh Abhijit. in the in front of the city hall of san francisco so one of the biggest illegal immigrant slums it's a slum i can't use any other word i saw and still this this has been around for four or five years now and these guys don't seem to change and, and yes, San don't. Francisco, aggressive panhandling, you can't stop anywhere. Whatever you said happens through that in San Francisco also, Abhijit. Well, it's across the board in California. Like all my relations who voted Democrat out there now want to move the hell out. 
and I'm too polite to tell them, ha ha ha, serves you right. But uh, please don't show any of my relatives this video, by the way. Otherwise, they'll get very upset. I, I can't stop anyone said, from watching, my dear. I don't know. You're, they might watch because they like to do what you're telling them not to do. So. No, no, I, no, no they, they, they don't. I'm too right-wing for them. So hopefully they won't watch. But anyway, I <laughs> you know shed crocodile tears and pretend to be very... Uh, 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 empathetic when inside I'm going <laughs> serves you right uh, but anyway <clears throat> uh, what happens is um, you know for a long time there wasn't this whole race replacement theory uh, to gain votes and still there was a lot of illegal movement of drugs etc 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 so even at the peak of the drug war I never understand why they did not uh, uh, think about, uh, you know, fencing that border, number one. Number two, what happened was, I think because the movement wasn't that great and large parts of it are the Mojave Desert and things like that, uh, the Sinaloa Desert and the Mojave Desert, I think there was this belief that, you know, it, it, those natural barriers would keep the numbers down. Uh, what little trickle happened was essential to the American economy in a pre-wage, uh, 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 in a pre-minimum wage America. Uh, and uh, because, you know, think about it. It's very advantageous where you can get somebody to uh, work in all these low paid jobs uh, without a minimum wage. And then when, you know, hard times hit and you have to lay them off, you just claim, oh, you know, uh, uh, you're all illegals. We're cracking down. You have to go home. No legal protections whatsoever out. Uh, so that was another thing. And the third thing was America had fairly decent surveillance technologies like thermal camera and things like that to be able to deal with that small inflow, more or less deal. I mean, deal in a reasonably satisfactory way. Right now, it's become a big migration and clearly that's not enough but they're still not doing anything uh, next question from simple like will sri lanka using indian rupee for foreign trade be good for india they said they are waiting for approval of rbi any country using the indian rupee is a very good thing for india I remember once upon a time the indian rupee used to be the standard currency in the united arab emirates here, right? here, here, it's here. always a good thing it's always a good thing when your currency starts getting used by people because that improves investor confidence. When somebody wants to use your rupee, what does it mean? It means that it's a reliable enough currency. Okay. So Sri Lanka wanting to use it, very good idea. Do it. Bring, Especially bring now the because they're not going to repeat the same mistakes. Well, bring the highest denomination down to 200 rupees first. That's very important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next question, please. Kanda Batata. Kanda, you're getting a lot of your questions answered, man. Thank, say uh, thanks to Abhijit or maybe Sachin. What is your view on harm reduction for drug addicted homeless population in the US? I mean, how much harm reduction can you realistically do, boss? I mean, if an adult wants to go and smoke up or uh, worse, uh, you know, drug up, uh, realistically, what can you do? You're adults because you have agency over your life. And you're in America that's moving towards legalizing euthanasia and things like that. I don't think it's anybody's responsibility to do harm reduction for drug addicts at all. I'm sorry, but it just isn't. That might sound cold. But, you know, the social cost of the, the cost to the average taxpayer is just too high. And there are too many druggies in America. You can't have such a lax attitude towards personal drug consumption. Um, Kanda, and then uh, maybe... demand more taxes to, you know, uh, uh, solve the problem. Uh, Abhijit, I don't know if you know this. Kanda also uh, fentanyl is now being beginning to be mass produced by China, even though they told Trump they will not do it. Now what they've done is they have sent all the raw materials to Mexico, according to reliable sources. So Mexico is going to produce fentanyl and fentanyl is guaranteed death. 
if you start uh, uh, overusing it and essentially you are on the way down maybe drug addicted people will you know as they have to get a higher kick every time so they at, at some point they may graduate to fentanyl and then it's it's out i don't know it's very very dangerous us has been cracking down on fentanyl but uh, if if it comes to mexico that's a problem Abhishek wants to know, sir, India signed Limoa and Comcasa a few years ago. What are the significance of both of these agreements? Limoa, not Limoa. Uh, 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 so the first is logistics and the second is communications, right? And what it means is generally all your communication equipment is going to be uh, the same and interchangeable, uh, shareable. And uh, Lemoa was to enable logistics. So, you know, uh, uh, Indian ships and things can uh, uh, avail services on an emergency basis at U.S. bases and the U.S. at Indian bases. Uh, and, uh, you know, you do year-end settling. So it's like you don't have to pay for it every single time. You pay for it at the end of the year or every six months. I, I forget what the time period was. But I think every end of the year kind of thing, you pay for it uh, and you get all the logistics done, not at commercial costs, but at uh, uh, friends' rates, uh, mates' rates, as it's called. Comcasa was more significant because it should have technically meant that at least parts of the Indian military should have been totally interoperable with NATO. But that's not really happening, right? So I'm still yet to see any... The agreements were signed, but I'm yet to see it having translated into anything on the ground. And the main thing about Comcasa was that, you know, it was meant to be used. Uh, so, for example, we would say, yes, we'll make it all uh, uh, compatible, but you have to provide us with all the codes and equipment and things like that to make it compatible, including on Russian equipment, which is obviously never going to happen, especially now. So, yeah. So again, signed, but tangible benefits to date, none. Abhishek wants to know, sir, why high-speed train succeeded in Japan and France, but has totally failed in China? And do you think high-speed train will succeed in India? Okay. See, the economics of trains is meant for medium to small countries. Okay. Medium to small, extremely high-income countries where people do not want to, uh, you know, spend uh, time getting to the airport and then all the uh, 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 the security queues. So, for example, uh, going from the center of Paris to Charles de Gaulle takes you a heck of a lot of time. And you're in the, tr uh, uh, in the car, it costs you about 80, 90 euros to do that. Uh, it's not very nice. It's not a pleasant experience. Uh, even getting from Tokyo to Haneda or Narita is quite a long process. Then security is a long process. Four uh, hours. Right. So four hours. Uh, it's horrible. Right. In And here you take the train. It's very comfortable. There's no real security. Uh, but it is secure. Uh, understand the difference. <coughs> small countries you know you go from paris uh, we ended up from paris to marseille in something like uh you know paris to toulon in something like five and a half six hours i i forget the times but it was quite rapid and it was lovely and you get to see the countryside and things like that right now this is very easy in a small country it's also very easy in a country where people have money to spend it is not easy in a big, in, a, in this what, third biggest country on earth with a, a per capita income that is a quarter that of quarter or even a fifth that of France or Japan. Impossible. The distances are too much. The disposable income is too less. Uh, it was never going to work. I think everybody knew it would work in special sectors. So, for example, Beijing to Tianjin would have always worked. Beijing to Shanghai, question mark. Because on one hand, Beijing to Tianjin, def uh, Beijing to Shanghai definitely had the disposable income in both cities. The question was, did it have 
the distance was it that was the time savings enough uh, i can personally tell you i would probably say yes for one very simple reason that in uh, beijing airport security is an absolute bloody nightmare okay everything else is smooth till you get to the security and security takes you about 2 hours to clear every single time in beijing i've had problems uh, as in not problems with security but a long sneaking queue through security uh so you know do they go through uh, hand uh, do they hand search everything do they hand search yeah they they pretty much hand search so, everything literally so they want to try and make sure that to be you're not taking up. any thumb drives you're not taking any thumb drives they, probably uh, well i mean whatever but uh, it isn't just thumb drives you know god knows what they're searching for so uh, it, it's just horrible so i don't think even beijing and shanghai despite the income pairing would have succeeded in india will a bombay delhi high speed train succeed uh do they have the size to succeed yes do they have this disposable income to succeed yes i think there at least uh, between 15 to 20 flights every day between delhi and bombay and but the distances are they enough so for example from my house to the airport takes 15 minutes and if you're in terminal 2 security takes another 15 minutes maximum so do you know uh, as opposed to terminal 3 which would take like 2 hours to get in uh but it's it, it's always that calculation so i don't know if t3 becomes more efficient and the new t1 which they're building becomes more efficient will it still be uh good to go and where will that high speed train end if it ends at victoria terminus where you're going straight into the city sure i think straight in the city to the problem is delhi railway station isn't the nicest place to stop right it's in north delhi whereas most of the business and stuff is in gurgaon and south delhi so uh maybe may not be i don't know but uh i i think it has more chance of success than a beijing to shanghai train would have ajay jata wants to know abhijit what was the situation of south india during partition were there also riots and bloodshed as in the north or was it relatively calmer much calmer because no part of india was going to go no where the bloodshed really was was in hyderabad and that too what the razakar started off but apparently after uh, india took over a lot of them were executed and killed uh, by the indian army up to 30000 of them so it was nothing compared to the eastern border and the western border but um, uh, it, it wasn't totally peaceful let's put it that way i don't really know what the situation in kerala was because i haven't read much about it uh but uh, i have read anything about it really uh but uh, yeah uh nothing compared to those two uh when, because you said relatively calmer so i would say relatively much 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 calmer so ham majumdar wants to know sir with the mba stance against oppressive wahhabism and improving arab israel relations will he face consequences like shah of iran long term will sunni let's take first question go ahead Hmm. so see the shah of iran faced consequences because the oil economy collapsed okay he was riding on a high because of the 73 oil embargo shot up the prices of oil like nobody's business but by 78 oil prices had come crashing down which caused a huge strain on the economy which caused a spending uh, cut and things like that because the deal was i will forcibly modernize iran but i will spend a lot of money on all of you that money was no longer there which is what set the whole thing in motion remember emergency was also triggered in the indian emergency of 75 was also triggered by a situation like that because the bangladesh war had put us in a severe balance of payments crisis it wasn't just the cost of the war it was also the cost of the refugees plus the cost of the uh, uh, oil embargo and the uh, oil prices hitting a uh, 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 high for those days uh, all combined to produce a situation of economic chaos within the country 
Right now, that doesn't seem to be the case. But if oil falls significantly, because the compact of the Saudi monarchy with the people is the same. We will look after you and we will rule unquestionably. Okay. Uh, if there is no money to look after, then what happens? That's the question. Right. Which is why, because he has gone off on a modernization drive and he has pinned the modernization drive as being driven by his anti Wahhabist uh, or rather anti fundamentalist tendencies. Uh, if oil prices fall precipitously and over a period and stay low over a period of time, then yes. Otherwise, no. Okay. Uh, and will the Sunni Brotherhood disintegrate because of his activity? Well, you know, the Muslim Brotherhood is uh, non-existent in Saudi Arabia at the moment. Uh, they're more in Egypt, uh, always have been, uh, than they've ever been here. Remember, people like Sayyid Qutb and all of that, uh, we're all in Egypt. Uh, so... Uh, I won't say they would disintegrate, though, because not, not the entire Arab world is developing at the same time. You will still have pockets like Iraq, Syria, uh, Egypt, North Africa, which will have places where the Muslim Brotherhood can move to. Uh, or you will have places like Jordan, which have kind of socialized the Muslim Brotherhood into becoming the king's loyal opposition. I also am hearing reports that Saudi Arabia and UAE are exporting the whole Wahhabi concept to Turkey. <coughs> Turkey will be the one that will be waging all these things. No, uh, quite the contrary. Uh, they aren't exporting it to Turkey. Uh, it is Erdogan who has been trying to import it very aggressively. And in no, that they are exporting it. He's importing it. Right? The same thing, isn't it? No, no, they're not exporting it. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. He has created conditions uh, for them to come and set up. Uh, but it is not the Muslim Brotherhood. Remember that. Uh, he got rid of the jamaat -e islami There it's called the jamaat -e islamiyah uh, uh, Because first of all, understand, uh, this comes from a sort of... Uh, 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 the uh, uh, Turks, they are uh, Hanafi. Whereas the uh, 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 Gulf Arabs are Salafi. They get very upset if you call them Wahhabi. And the uh, 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 Egyptians are another, I forget what the freak there is. But anyway, uh, they are completely different schools. What Erdogan is doing is he's creating a breeding ground for terrorists, not for different schools of theology and political resistance and things like that. He doesn't want the politics of it. He just wants the military benefits of it. Next question, please. Prince wants to know, whenever we criticize Islamic rule, we often hear, hear that even Aurangzeb built temples and many Islamic rulers did build temples. What's the design, reason behind this if they were staunch Muslims? You know, okay, uh, le let me give you a simple example. You hear that Aurangzeb built, uh, 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 he didn't build temples, he gave money to temples for sure. Uh, and you, they claim that the maximum number of Hindus were employed during Aurangzeb's emperorship. Ask them for the primary source of this information, that the maximum number of Hindus were there, in the uh, uh, in Aurangzeb's administration, I am yet to find the primary source of it. I have seen everybody quote somebody else, and when they quote somebody else, it uh, 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 it uh, I I have never been able to trace it. I've been able to trace it back to a CBSC uh, uh, eighth standard text, uh, no seventh standard textbook, and not beyond that. And you know, CBSC textbooks do not have uh, original sources. So every time you hear that, ask them uh, where, number one. Number two, do you know Hitler, the man who, his commanding officer who recommended him for uh, promotion and for a medal was a Jew. The guy who kept him alive when he was a struggling artist through payments was a Jew. 
Do you know there were about 40 uh, Jewish officers in the Finnish army uh, who fought alongside the SS? A lot of them were given the Iron Cross and they refused it to the man. They said, look, we're fighting as Finns, not as Germans. We hate you. Screw you. But there was that. Now, just because you've decided... Now, remember, Aurangzeb was also related to all these uh, people, no? The Maharajas of Jodhpur, Jaipur and all, where his mamas and things like that, no? Because of all right, the uh, Jodhabai right. and all of that. Right. So, uh, uh, if you go and ask... Uh, 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 Mr. Obesi also said, Ham Mandir bana rahe, he'll give you 500 rupees. That doesn't make him a secular man. Okay, so there are lots of uh, 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 these are this grants to temples are the exceptions that prove the rule. They are not the rule. And when they tell you about Hindus in the administration, ask them to show you the primary source of the data. Next question, please. Prince again, Anand Ranganathan once claimed that after independence, Muslims who left India, their property were given to Wax Board. Is it really true? As I didn't get much proof of this. Uh, you won't get much proof because there, was no, uh, there wasn't much documentation maintained. There was lots of evacuee property. And as a rule, if... Uh, <coughs> Sunni properties, if you die intestate and things like that, the Waqf board is actually meant to take it over. But I don't know where you'd find the categorization of it. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah. Next question, please. Sandeep K wants to know, purely from Indian point of view, should we consider Axis powers as villains and allied powers as heroes? Isn't it superimposing European her slash Villain on India? Mm, yes and no. Um, and I'll tell you why. You really wouldn't have been... Uh, you would not have wanted to be ruled by the Japanese or the Brits uh, or the Germans. Let's be very clear about that. Uh, they... Even as colonial powers went, they were particularly nasty. The British, for all their faults, were never as bad as the Germans and never as bad as the Japanese. Okay? They were horrible, sure. Most of their crimes were crimes of omission, not crimes of commission. Most of Japan and Germany's crimes were crimes of uh, uh, commission. You know what the difference is, right? Omission is, uh, you know... Um, uh, you're a negligent parent. You're not a criminal parent. Though in America, that crowd says criminal negligence. As opposed to, mere ko mera bacha acha nahi lagta hai. Isi liye maine jo gadi aa raha tha, uske niche maine phenk diya. You understand the difference? So, uh, this was the fundamental difference between Germany, Japan on the one hand and Britain and America on the other. The French on the other hand were quite brutal, but nowhere near, not even remotely close to what Germany and Japan did. And what Italy really? did in Libya also. You know, even there, even with the Boer uh, war, what Britain did with the, with the Boers in South Africa, was nothing compared to what the Italians, you know, the Italians took on the tactics of the British in the Boer War and implemented it in Libya and Ethiopia. And they did it in a much, much nastier, brutal way than the British had. So there was a big, big difference out there. Let's be clear about that. But if it comes to giving them the... Uh, the satisfaction of their moral posturing. I believe we should deny them the. Uh, 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 we we should deny them the uh, uh, intellectual space for that kind of moral posturing and say, "Well, no, it was all shades of grey." Next question from Ishan Sharma: What's your take on the attack by Bolsonaro supporters on Brazil Congress buildings? 
is he finished now will this thing go also go down as jan 6 thing will there will it be what will be the what will be its impact on foreign and domestic uh, you know politics yes yes and yes you know trump shouldn't have well trump didn't do what he did uh, uh what they accuse him of doing and uh bolsonaro should have learned from jan 6th and stopped his supporters from doing what they did you may not agree with the results of an election but you have to go along with it boss you do not contest elections like this theek hai you then win power and then you change the rules and things like that but this is not the way to do it yes it will go down like the jan 6 thing i think bolsonaro is pretty much finished but there will be no impact foreign or domestic except that the left will uh, get a lot more tyrannical and to get away with throwing a lot of right wing people in jail because remember the rule of law is significantly less in brazil than it is in america where you can't really throw trump in jail not that trump did anything but still maliban bhattacharya wants to know china has developed tibet so much that so much of chinese built railway across china tibet on a post compared to india where people are voicing opinions against government with respect to joshi mat your views well what does joshi mat have to do with that maliban i didn't get the question because joshi mat is a little village and you have reeked environmental havoc i can show you many many places in china that have been washed away in floods and things like that because of the exact same kind of environmental havoc that china has reeked it's actually a very similar situation to lots of places washed away in floods in china next sandman 1306 why is chanakya by the end of 9th century ce demonized where people like bana bhatta criticize him for being too cutthroat i don't know i've never actually read this bana bhatta criticism of him but ji is it so surprising that somebody had a difference of opinion with chanakya chanakya is very cutthroat you know i mean if you go into the arthashastra shastra he's telling you when the father should kill the son when the son should kill the father etc etc uh do you it is necessary for state craft but it is quite gruesome no maliban again second question is the indian ifs lobby still living in soviet era saw a lot of them voicing yes. anti west opinions especially against the us and yes. defend russia as if putin is a savior of the masses you know there's a fellow on twitter called mk badra kumar biggest lout that they he that there is an absolute disgrace to the ifs out and out bloody russia shill and the russians don't even consider take him very seriously by the way you talk to russian diplomats and what they think about mk badra kumar it will make you laugh he basically trolls through every conspiracy theory and repeats it right but you have people like that they were allowed to get away with shit like that and this all starts because of this uh, uh, you know uh, whose idea was it of, uh, was it haksar or dars Uh, a thing for a, a committed bureaucracy where the bureaucracy's thinking had to be aligned with the government's thinking a and b with uh, 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 krishna menon's uh, vitriolic anti uh, america crap so it's been who came earlier right who came earlier dhar or menon. haksar no no krishna no menon. between dhar and haksar dhar and haksar now. who came first okay I because forget. haksar was with indira gandhi time this may be before that Mm. No, no, Haksar. I no. I forget who brought in. I'm going to check that up. Good idea. I'm going to check that up. Who brought in? Mm-hmm. I I keep forgetting who. You know, the problem is I keep reading after I hear. Up, I need to write it down and keep it somewhere as a ready reference because I've checked this up three times. I know who it is, and I keep forgetting who it is. Somebody says Haksar was the one who said it. I uh, will take it at that. Okay. And uh, there is one other question from. majumda are saying that we did not answer his second question no we did answer your second question also um abhijit didn't give me a chance to read the second question he uh, read it and answered it himself uh, next question yes. from sandman 1306 is ambedkar the new jesus or ambedkarism the new christianity no i don't think it is uh, uh ambedkar did not believe in socialism boss 
Christ was a socialist. I think Christ was one of the world's first socialists. Uh, Ambedkar did not celebrate poverty. He viewed poverty through an extremely negative lens. And if Ambedkar was the new Jesus, he would have adopted Christianity. Why did he choose something within the Indic fold like Buddhism and not something totally alien like Christianity? He did not have a very good opinion of Christianity. Ajay Jata wants to know, Abhijit, some people claim that Porus won the battle of Hydaspes. Are there any credible sources which mention that Alexander lost the battle? No. The entire case is made through extrapolation. So, for example, if you if Porus had lost the battle, he would have been cannon for well, in those days they didn't have cannon, so uh, he would have been arrow fodder, and he would have been used as an auxiliary who would have been sent into the fight first. Yet we're told in every battle after that that he was always held in reserve. Which doesn't really mean that you've been used the way the, per the Persian troops were always sent in first. Because you know the victory over Persia was absolute. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot that doesn't add up with what we see. Uh, there's also the fact that Alexander doesn't even bear mention in a single Indian source. There is not one Indian source that talks about him. So, uh, if he had won, and if he had come into Porus's kingdom, there would have been something, no? Uh, there should have at least been some kind of a victory monument or something like that. Not even that. Not even that. And remember, at this time, Alexander's troops were in full rebellion. Why? We still don't know. Uh, uh, it wasn't even very hot. Everybody says, oh, it was the heat of the Indian plains, heat of the Indian plains. You know, for somebody who talks about the heat of the Indian plains, I wish they've actually gone into the deserts of Persia and felt the heat out there. It's unbearable. So for an army that was able to manage just fine through the Persian salt desert, really, India was too hot. A lot of things don't make sense. It is an extrapolated case, but there is zero sources. I think one of the problems for the Alexander's forces was that they suddenly came up against an army which used the elephant as a primary fighting animal. You know, they that actually the overcame they... the elephant very quickly. No, uh, uh, they, it wasn't the first time that they came up across the elephant. They had already figured out ways of dealing with the elephant very quickly. And Where? elephants were the Where? worst. Uh, elephants have uh, North Africa, Egypt, per the Persian Empire oh. had elephants. Yeah. So uh, they had elephants. They had experience against elephants. Uh, uh, <coughs> we know this for a fact because in uh, 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 there are mentions of elephants across, in the, I think, in the Battle of Granicus or Isis and in the battles of Egypt. <coughs> so it wasn't the first time they'd come across elephants and they knew how to deal with them. Abhishan Shetty wants to know, tell your opinion on Roe Wade, Roe versus Wade. You know, if you had asked me this question about four or five years back, uh, I would have supported Roe versus Wade. But just because how nasty this entire woke thing and the Democrats have become and this sort of intersectionism between abortionism and voting Democrat and hating Hindus, I 100% support the striking down of Roe versus Wade. 100%. And I think America deserves it. Yes, Just yes, your, I, not. This is not based on principle. On the basis of principle, I should say that individual rights matter. Right. But on a serious note again, what about the right of the fetus? I think it has to be scientifically established at what point does the fetus become self-aware and not just self-aware uh, till the point you can determine self-awareness of a fetus, the, uh, the benefit of the doubt has to go to the fetus. Mind you, there is also a pro-abortion institute, I forget which one. I can't access my Twitter, but... Uh, Somebody had sent me this fantastic stuff on uh, abortion uh, statistics. Even pro-abortion places will tell you that 98% of abortions done in America 
are based on lifestyle choice. They are not based on emergency or because you were raped or whatever. It's because uh, or because it uh, you're in a life threatening situation. It's done simply because I don't want to have the baby and that's it. And I'm sorry, correct the Guttmacher Institute. Thank you. Uh, yes. And, you know, I'm sorry, I'm going to have an abortion because I don't feel like it. Sorry, that for me, that's unacceptable period at any given point of time. No mother should have that right. VSS wants to know, defeating Park militarily has become the easiest of all in history, all of our history. Yet our intellectuals talk about waiting for it to self-destruct. Ab aur kitna self-destruct hoga? Let's follow Gita and Karma. Your thoughts? Really? Park has been the easiest? Um, I think not. Uh, they defeated the USSR in uh, Afghanistan. They defeated America in Afghanistan. Uh, they managed to defeat America and Afghanistan while still getting aid from the Americans in Afghanistan. Uh, they managed to lose Bangladesh and still hold together. Uh, we never managed to decisively defeat them on the Western Front like we did on the Eastern Front. Uh, so no, boss. Pakistan has never been easy to uh, 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 defeat. I would really urge you to reassess this thing. Never underestimate your enemy. You're making a huge yeah. mistake by uh, talking like this. Okay, number one. And our intellectuals talk because they make the same thing. Self-destruct, self-destruct. They, they, they are... Uh, not as bad as you, but they're just one step uh, less than you. Uh, because you believe it is already self-destructed and it is uh, uh, already defeated. Uh, they are not going to self-destruct, as far as I can tell. As of now, I do not see them self-destructing. This isn't the worst. I think if you're as old as me, you'd have lived through... Uh, a severe balance of payments crises and whatnot uh, that Pakistan has endured in the past, and they have survived. They have survived just fine. You worry about yourself. Pakistan ka baad mein dekhte hain. They got a, a loan of three billion, I think, from OIC. That will give them another month. They'll keep getting Not loans eight, one way or another. Eight, eight. Eight. A, yeah. they'll, they, they'll use their nuclear weapons to uh, this thing, you know, oh, if the state breaks down, the nuclear weapons will get into God knows whose hands and America will ultimately end up giving them aid. Mandar Karnik wants to know, what do you think of the Mexican drug war, especially Sinaloa, cart Sinaloa cartel being destroyed and Jalisco new gen trying to muscle in? Mandar, you've been watching too much I Netflix. Think nothing of it. Yes, you've been watching too much Netflix and it's not Helisco, it's Jalisco. J-A-L-I-S-C-O, it's pronounced Halisco. Ah, so no, so no, so no, so no, uh, and... this is your confusion. Listen, Professor Abhijit, this is your confusion. Uh, J is Ha in Spanish. It is San? That is what I said. It, no, but it is not San Jose. It is say, it is San Jose. You live in San, San Jose. Jose. It's Mexico, no, not no, no, Mexico. You, you, Yes, it's Mexico, but it's San Jose and it's Jalisco province. Yeah, it's actually are... written Jalisco. Come but... on. <laughs> no, no. Anybody <laughs> saying uh, San Jose will be banned from P Gurus. The only official accepted pronunciation of San Jose is San Jose. You can't even put the E with the matra on top to make it A. So it has to be San Jose. Okay. Uh, and uh, look, you tell me, Mandar, this is like, it's a constant thing. One cartel gets destroyed and another cartel forms that moves into the power vacuum. What's new? It's just the same old pattern repeating itself. Kuch nahi hoga. Jay Patta wants to know, under what conditions could the rebellion in 1857 <coughs> have been a success? And where the Turkic migration to Anatolia numerically okay. superior one to one by India? one, one by one. One at one by one. Yeah. Uh, 18, 1857, uh, there was no condition under which it could have been a success. You were a pre industrial state with obsolete ideas of warfare, fighting against what was the foremost industrial power of that time. 
there were no circumstances under which it could have succeeded zero zilch okay uh, uh in the seven in what was it 1760 or 70 i forget uh, this guy um, uh I, william dalrymple in his book i went and checked it also it's true fort william alone had 1 million rifles at that time stored we don't know how much in fort st george 1 million they had more guns than they had soldiers at that time the east india company they had more cannon they had much better supply chains they had much regular supply chains they had standardized barrels they had standardized everything uh, not rifles. And they had railway uh, lines to get around quickly. Muskets, but they had railway lines to get around quickly. They had generally, they had everything to uh, win. Now, there is no situation in which a primitive, unless you make a movie like Avatar, sure. Unless you live in a country like Afghanistan that is very sparsely populated and heavily mountainous, sure. But remember, the Afghans didn't win by... Uh, the Afghans had a good number of guns. Don't forget that. Okay, and they won by attacking the supply lines. In India, you are overpopulated. You're over... The entire revolt happened in the flats and the plains where communication is very, very easy. There were no circumstances under which you could have won. Uh, and they had wireless by then, right? They already, they already had wireless, no, no, right? By no, that time? no, 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 they didn't. Uh, and were the Turkic migration in Anatolia numerically superior to India? No, they were tiny. They were tiny and they were overwhelmingly men. Not women, men coming in. They were a tiny, tiny fraction. Next question, please. She Phoenix, Indian in Austria. Your opinion Sorry, about Jaisal? Just go back. Go, go back to that question. I misread the question. Yeah. Hmm. Turkic migration Anatolia was actually much smaller than India. Uh, in India, there were overwhelmingly men, but in Anatolia, there were overwhelmingly uh, uh, the entire tribe. Number one. But in spite of that, why were they numerically inferior than those coming to India? Well, very simple. Because what happens is India is much closer and we had all kinds of Turks coming in. Okay, uh, Uzbeks, uh, uh, Oghuz, all of them. Whereas to Anatolia, you see a very specific kind of migration. It was fundamentally the Turkomans, which is the Oghuz branches going in there. And it was great pastoral land. It wasn't able to support high population numbers coming in. So even the numbers that went there, it was sort of the scrap land. Uh, the ones who could afford to move to good land or had access would come to India. The ones who got left out, the, the smallest of the small tribes, who also curiously were the fiercest tribes because they had to fight much harder to survive, used to get sent off to Anatolia. Next. She Phoenix wants to know, Indian Austria, your opinion about Jay Shankar's interview last year saw crazy number of illegal Punjabi Sikhs at train stations. What is the reason for that? More restaurant suggestions, please. It's like what? Three questions. Okay. My opinion of Jay Shankar interview, you're talking about the interview with ORF, right? The Austrian broadcaster. Not Observer yeah, Research yeah. Foundation, but uh, yeah. Uh, um, look, I always like Jay Shankar's interviews. He's snappy, he's witty, whatever. My issue is never with his interviews. My issue is, well, there's sometimes with his interviews, but uh, uh, mostly it's to do with the fact that other than giving interviews, he does none of the spade work or groundwork required in building up the IFS uh, you know, de, uh, de leftification of the IFS and expansion of the IFS that's required. Uh, you know, it's just another talk shop like Krishna Menon. And he talks well, unlike Krishna Menon, who used to piss off people. Jay Shankar doesn't piss off people. So 
that's my thing he's great as a publicity guy action no uh crazy number of punjabi sikhs at train stations i honestly don't know i haven't so i can't tell you what the reason for it is more restaurant suggestions where in vienna i've told you restaurant number 52 on on ungarnstrasse no that's very good that's where i always go it's a chinese restaurant it's a sichuan restaurant next question please mr lee wants to know did the bronze age collapse trigger monotheistic trends among civilizations of that period no it did not uh monotheism comes about much much later in the late iron age it wasn't triggered at all by the bronze age collapse because the first monotheism that you see is well in the middle of the bronze age nowhere near the collapse of the bronze age uh, uh it's akhenaten right uh and uh, uh remember judaism wasn't monotheistic till about <coughs> 6700 bc when hezekiah forcibly makes it monotheistic what the trigger for it is we don't know but by 700 uh, uh uh israel was what is today israel uh, uh was deep 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 in the uh, uh iron age so no Vignesh Jairam wants to know uh, your views on K Kamaraj just another politician nothing special Mr Lee again Mr as per mensa 2% of a population have an iq greater than 132 that is 5 lakh gifted kids from 72 million born in an annual cohort in india are we missing these kids or is the bell curve wrong first remember iq doesn't necessarily translate to success you may have a i uh, a lower iq or a higher iq but it's different things that trigger success uh based on the environment okay and mostly we are missing these kids because even the smartest kid faced with the oppressiveness of the indian education system which discourages him from asking why जो मैंने तेरे को सिखाया फट जो मैंने तेरे को सिखाया वही लिख एग्जाम में अपने आप खुद मत सोचो ज्यादा होशियारी दिखाने की कोशिश मत करो एग्जैक्टली but even the upper middle class and middle class most of you watching this do you even realize the kind of damage that is being inflicted on your kid by cbsc icsc state board and all of that sit down and think about it next question please reek jyoti hai why bureaucracy in germany france is horribly slow why eu is far behind third world india in terms of e governance and digital payments mm, they are not slow they are actually very fast i have very good experiences with german and french bureaucracy and diplomats uh, no complaints uh, with digital understand digital and e governance is a different thing uh many countries take a more see in india the view is in germany and france the view is first let us understand a situation completely and then what are the pitfalls of it let other people try it first and then we will start experimenting we don't want to experiment on our people okay and things work very well there so there's no need to experiment as such in india understand you are a governance deficit country severe governance deficit country and because nobody wants to invest in humans and solve the human problem we have always looked at technology as the thing that will free us up so you know how uh, <coughs> uh, uh, this fellow uh, nehru used to say dams are the temples of modern india he didn't have energy so he was looking to uh, dams and those dams caused more environmental and agricultural damage than anything else ever did okay then they brought in the green revolution which caused the cancer problem 
they brought in eucalyptus, which destroyed the entire bloody uh, northern uh, water tables uh, completely. And they're still not getting rid of the eucalyptus. Huh? So we are very fast. We're very stupid. We don't think things through. That e-governance and digital payment have worked is Ram Bharose. It may not have. We still don't know what the uh, uh, back doors and things are, how compromised it is, how secure it is and things like that. And especially with most of this transaction being done in Chinese phone or Chinese microchips, uh, I still have my doubts about it. I'm very grateful for the speed and things that it provides me with. But I'm very, very scared about it generally because I don't think we have a very good uh, uh, digital security culture in this country at all. Because understand, it's meant to empower the lowest of the low, but the services provided are so critical that it needs the highest tiers of security. Okay, there's a fundamental contradiction out there. But it's worked so far and it's worked very well, thank God for that. It doesn't mean the EU is slow or they're worse. Next question from Magna Tranga. Your take on sudden huge haul of drugs by Indian agencies. Is it an effect, effect of better patrolling or is it simply that more drugs are being pushed into India now? See, we don't know. That's a really good question, Magna Tranga, but uh, we don't know because the sample size is too small. We still don't know if uh, this is actually more drugs being pushed in or better patrolling happening. And I'll tell you why. I haven't seen any uh, improvements, uh, uh, large scale improvements in training of customs uh, and border detection. I have not seen new technology measures for it. <coughs> and I've also not seen uh, evidence of some country or countries trying to push more drugs in. Or at least the raids are too small to suggest that that's happening. So we don't know yet. We will need a more systematic haul. One huge haul can be sheer dumb luck. It could also be the result of uh, intelligence sharing with the foreign government. Right. Uh, it could be the result of a tip off. So, you know, what happens at uh, airports is there is this thing where if a guy has bought more than his duty-free share, if you call up or buys gold especially, they call up and tell Indian customs and they get a reward for dobbing you in. Do you know that? Uh, I don't know if this happened by sheer dumb luck or whatever. We still don't know because, see, there are too few data points out here to build a picture of it. I think we should call it uh, quits now. It's 58 minutes. Viewers, thank you so much for your questions. Yes, there is a backlog now of last week's and this week's and Abhijit will uh, hopefully get to it very soon and we'll keep you posted on when. Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. And when you are listening to your questions that were not asked today, go to channel two and please do subscribe at channel two. Please do us this big favor. We never know when we are going to be shut down for whatever reason, no idea. We try to be as factual as possible. Sometimes things go wrong. Thank you so much, Abhijit. And we'll be back again next week. Namaskar.